Praise the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning for your presence. We thank you, Father God, for your son Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and for the saints gathered here today. We assemble in your son Jesus' name. We give thanks unto you, Lord. We ask now for help in our time of need to rightly divide the word of truth, to be hearers of this word, that we will be doers of this word. And we give thanks to you for victory we have in the word today. We ask that you rebuke the devourer for our sake, Lord, that we can hear your still, small voice. And may this word give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, comfort, edification, and encouragement we desire through this word, Lord. And may this word wash us, purge us, and cleanse us from the inside out and make us in your image and likeness, Lord, as we hide this word in our heart. May you order our steps in this word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Each and every one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Open your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter 14. We find ourselves in verse 13. Romans 14 and verse 13. Romans 14 is dealing with the strong and the weak brother, sister in the faith. Dealing with the day that one esteemed above another, dealing with one who eats meat that may have been offered to Allah, and others who may eat only vegetables, amen? amen. But the Bible tells us that Christ died for both, amen? amen. The weak and the strong, those who eat vegetables, those who eat meat, those who esteem one day above another, amen? We are not to judge. Verse 4 says, Who are you that judge another man's servant? And we are all Christ's servants. Amen? Amen? To his own master he stands or fall. So we should not judge the one who eats only vegetables or the one who eats meat that may have been offered to idols or the one who esteems Saturday above another day or the one who esteems Sunday above another day or Monday or Tuesday above another day. We should not judge one another, the strong or the weak. Amen? Amen? For we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's what the word says in verse 10. Amen? And every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. It says in verse 11. So that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. The strong will not give an account of the weak to God. The weak will not give an account of the strong to God. Those who have church on Saturday will not give an account of those who have church on Sunday. Those who esteem Sunday over Saturday will not give an account to God over those who have church on Saturday or any other day. Amen? Amen. Those who eat meat or those who eat only vegetables will not give an account. You will give an account of yourself to God. Amen? Yes. So the word tells us, amen, why do you judge your brother? Why do you say that nothing, your brother? For we shall all stand before the, the judgment seat of Christ, and every knee shall bow, the strong mm -hmm. and the weak. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Yes. Those who esteem Saturdays, yes. those who esteem Sundays, yes. every knee shall bow. Amen. Those who eat meat, those who eat on the vegetables, every knee shall bow. Amen? Amen. Everyone will, will give an account of himself Amen. to God. Yes. Amen. So why do we judge our brother? Amen. Verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Amen. Let's not judge the ones that have church on Saturday anymore. Amen. Let's not judge the ones that have church on Sunday anymore. Let's not judge the one who esteems Saturday anymore, or esteems Sunday, or esteems eating only vegetables, or eating meat. Amen? Yes. Let us not judge that for one another anymore. These are brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block on occasion to fall in his brother's way. Amen? Amen? Let's not put an occasion to fall in our brother's way or be the reason for our brother, our sister to fall, amen? amen? Away from God, to lose, amen, confidence in their faith. You, Let's not be the reason, 
amen, that our brother or sister, amen, fall away from the faith, amen? We should not offend that brother or sister, amen? Verse 21 said that we're not to do anything whereby your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Amen? Verse 15 says that we are to walk in love. Now walk you not charitably. If your brother be grieved with your meat because we have this freedom and this liberty, we're fully persuaded about this meat. But instead of eating the meat and calling your brother to stumble or be offended or made weak, the Bible says, now walk you not charitably, not walk, we ought to walk in love, amen? Destroy not him with your meat for whom Christ died. Let's not destroy our brother's faith and wound his conscience over meat, over a meal. We're to walk in love and judge not. Even though the Apostle Paul said in verse 14, I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean. Amen. He knew it was not any food unclean that defiled the man's body. The scripture says it's not what a man uh, 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 goes in the man that defiles the body. It's what comes out of the man that defiles the body. Amen. So let's not take an occasion put a stumbling block in our brother's way. Amen? And that word occasion to fall means scandalizo is translated in the New Testament as offend. We shouldn't offend our brother or sister. Amen? An occasion to fall. Amen? In Matthew chapter 4, we know very well, after the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist, Jesus was carried into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, mm -hmm. an occasion to fall. Yes. Amen? Yes. And Jesus, amen, in that passage of scripture as the devil, amen, three times attempted, took an occasion for Jesus to fall. Mm -hmm. And that first occasion had to deal with food, amen? I'll turn these stones into bread. I know you've been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. I know you're hungry. You, Amen. You're in the, in the flesh. Uh, go ahead and turn these stones into bread. Amen. You know what he said? Yeah. And Jesus in verse 4 said, In his written mansion, I live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes. Amen. Yeah. An occasion to fall. Fool. The devil was successful with Adam and Eve, the first Adam, amen, in the Garden of Eden. So he returned to his old tactic, that, that play that he won with before, you know, amen, that he scored on. And he went back to that, that play uh, from the beginning amen. that he won with, with Adam and Eve. But, amen, he tried that same play on Jesus, amen, the flesh. He always going to come from the outside. To trip, to trip us up and create an occasion for us to fall. Amen? Yes. So he tried to use Jesus' freedom and liberty that he has in God. That same freedom and liberty that we have now in God. Amen. Because our sins are now forgiven and paid for legally by Jesus. Amen? Amen. The devil will use your freedom and your liberty for you to be an occasion for your brother or sister to fall. Amen? Amen? So he said uh, that Jesus, to turn these stones to bread, and Jesus hmm, used the word. Amen. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We're talking about an occasion to fall. It, it's devil oriented. When we Amen. Uh, putting up an occasion for our brother and sister to fall. Understand who's behind it. It's the devil. Amen. We can't speak about our freedom and liberty that we have in Christ. Paul said, I'm fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's what he said in verse 14. And he said later, I believe in verse 20, that all things are indeed pure. Amen. In Romans 14 and 20. 
But yet and still, he, instead of putting a candy for his brother and sister to fall, he says we have to walk charitably, to walk in love Amen. and not judge one another anymore. Amen. For we all have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of ourselves. Yeah. Every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, the, the, the strong believer, the weak believer, the one who is seen Saturday, the one who is seen Sunday, the one who eat meat, the one who eats vegetables only, we all have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. There is no need for me to judge my brother or sister anymore. Amen. Praise God got it. The devil, verse 5, takes him up into the holy city. So you don't get, he tries to take you to a comfortable place. Mm. See, so the devil don't mind you coming to church. Yeah. Putting you in a familiar environment. He can still cause uh, uh, the saints to uh, put a stumbling block, a fear to make weak your brother and sister right in church. Yeah. We know it happens. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So he took Jesus. Amen. To the Holy City, Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Or took him right to the church. Took him to the temple. And he says, if you be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give you the angel charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said again, it is written again, you should not tempt the Lord your God. He used the, the word to defeat an occasion to fall. Yeah. That's how you defeat an occasion to fall. You use the word. You use what's written. We don't always have to wait on a new revelation. I got to hear from God. I'm praying to hear from God. You was written. Yeah. Quit making excuses. Yeah. Again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain. See, he's taking him higher and higher. And shows them all the kingdoms of the world. Okay, if Jerusalem wasn't enough for you, I'm going to show you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to them, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. <laughs> See? That's what the devil wanted from the beginning. He said he's going to raise his throne above the throne of God. Amen? And Jesus says to him, you got to recognize who you're dealing with when you're placing a, 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 an occasion to fall in your brother's path and we're not walking in love. you got to know who's, who you're dealing with. Jesus says, get you from here, Satan. Amen. you got to recognize you're dealing with Satan. Yes. Amen. When you are, are, are causing your brother, making an occasion for your brother or sister to fall and you're going to justify that I have this freedom, that I'm fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus Christ that this meat is not unclean. I need my meat. Mm -hmm. You're working with the devil. Mm -hmm. It's not freedom in God. Freedom in God is how you walking in love. Amen. Get you from here, Satan. It is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil leaves him. Amen? An angel came and ministered to him. And Luke said the devil left him and waited for another occasion, opportunity to tempt, amen, and to call an occasion for our Lord and Savior to fall. When the devil heard that at John's baptism of Christ and God spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son, amen, amen. believe in him. When, when God spoke that, the devil heard that. And he went immediately after our Savior. He went after the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Let's not put an occasion to fall. Let's look at the example of Christ. Use the word. Walk in love. Look at Matthew 13. In Matthew 13, the parable of the sword. Look at verse 18. Matthew 13 and 18. Hear you the therefore the parable of the sword. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one, the devil, Satan, 
and catch it the way that which was sown in your heart. When you hear the word and understand it not. Mm. Amen? Amen? We need to understand the word in the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. We hear the word. Many hear the word, but they don't understand it. And how to grow thereby, how to apply it to their life. We need to understand that just being a hearer of the word is not sufficient. How does the devil know you don't understand what you're hearing? He listening. He watching. She don't know what she hearing. She don't understand what she hear. He don't understand what he hear. He will come and take it away. That which was sown in your heart. Amen? Amen? This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into the stony place, the same as he that hears the word and immediately with joy he receives it, yet he has no root in himself. See? But endure for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, see, an occasion to fall. When tribulation or persecution arises, which can create an occasion to fall, because of the word, amen, and, and, and it's coming for the word. Yes, man. By and by, he is offended. The saint is offended. Because he don't understand the word. He, he, he endured for a while, amen? But when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, by and by, he is offended, amen? Look at verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns, and he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So you hear the word among the thorns and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. Now you have an occasion to fall, and you become unfruitful. Amen? Yeah. But he that receives seed into the good ground, that's you and I, amen, good ground, is he that hears the word and understands it. You can evaluate whether you're good ground. Do you understand what you hear? Yeah. Remember in, in, in verse 19 it says they hear the word but they understand it not. Yeah. But he that receives seed into the good ground hears the word and understands it. So if you're a good ground Christian you'll understand the word. Amen? Yeah. Which also bears, there you go, if you if you are uh, 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 good ground and you understand the word, you will bear fruit, amen? Yes. And you will bring fruit forth, and some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. But occasion to fall, amen. We need to understand the word to combat that occasion to fall. We need to hear the word and understand it. So we can, amen, uh, uh, um, Fight against an occasion to fall or a bigger reason for an occasion to fall to our brother or sister. Understand the word. Yes, we have liberty and right. As the Apostle Paul says, amen, that he was fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus Christ that, amen, all things are, are, are clean. But for his brother and sister's sake, for their conscience, for their uh, 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 faith, he, he'd rather walk charitably. He encouraged us to walk charitably, to walk in love. Amen? Amen. Look at chapter 26, Matthew. Matthew 26. Amen. An occasion to fall. The Last Supper, in verse 31, Jesus says to them, all you shall be offended, stumble. All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. That night they will become offended. It was an occasion for them to fall. But after I'm risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered, listen now, and said to him, 
though all men shall be offended and, and because of you yet I will I never be offended. Because of you yet will I never be offended. I will never fall away, peace. I will never stumble, amen, and fall away. But Jesus said, Fairly, Peter, I say to you, that you spoke up, I say to you, that this night, before the cock crow, you shall deny me three times. You should deny me thrice. An occasion to fall. Jesus knows our occasions to fall. Amen? Yeah. He told Peter, this night you'll, you, you, you'll fall, you'll stumble three times. You'll be offended in me three times. Wow. Peter said to him, though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you. Don't be too overconfident in yourself. Likewise, also said all of the disciples. All of them said it. Amen? Amen. Verse 36, then comes Jesus with them to a place called Gethsemane and says to the disciples, sit you here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, we know that James and John, and began to be soft and very heavy. He knew his cup of bitterness. Amen? Then he says to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even to death. Tear you here and watch with me. Pray here. Remain here and pray with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. Amen? Yes. Saying, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Amen. To, to, to overcome an occasion to fall, we need to stay on our knees before the Lord. And let his will be done. Amen. And he comes to the disciples and finds them asleep. Amen? Amen? See, when Jesus asks us to pray and we are asleep, see, now we're creating our own occasion to fall. Amen. When you're not praying, you don't have a, a consistent, steady, prayer like praying always, praying in the morning, praying in the new day, praying in the evening, men are always pray. You, you're creating an occasion for yourself to fall. Amen? We're not talking to the Father. We're not trying to hear from the Father. We're not casting all our care on the Father. Amen. In an acceptable time. Therefore, we're creating an occasion to fall. They were asleep. And he says to Peter, What? Could you not walk with me one hour? Watch and pray. That you enter not into temptation, see, that temptation, that occasion mm -hmm. to fall. Watch and pray. Mm -hmm. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit of God is always ready for prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. The spirit of God is ready to pray for those things we know not what we ought to pray for. Mm -hmm. But we can't allow, amen. Our slothfulness and laziness of the flesh keep us from praying. It will keep, it will create an occasion to fall in your life. Amen. He went away again the second time, praising, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. Amen? Yes. That's our prayer, always, that God's will be done. Amen? And he came and found them asleep again. Peter, James, John, asleep again. This time when he came in verse 43, they didn't even know he was there. He didn't even wake him up. <laughs> verse 44 says, how do I know that? He left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words. The same words he said in verse 39. The same words he said in verse 42. He said those same words in verse 44. Amen? Don't be trying to be too deep in your prayers. You haven't got that breakthrough you need from the Lord. Keep saying the same words. Give him thanks. Give him praise. May his will be done. Say the same words. Amen. You got the same hurt, the same pain, the same uh, uh, sorrow. You have the same discouragement. Amen. Tell the same words. Amen. Don't be trying to sound too righteous and too holy and too just. Just tell him in your own voice. The same words. He left them, went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words. See, so that you don't have an occasion to fall, you have to, Jesus prayed three times. Because he knew Calvary, the cross, was before him. Yes. And he didn't 
want to fall away. Even though the Bible says he could have called, what, 12 legions of angels yes. to rescue him. Mm -hmm. But he prayed that his father's will be done. Yes. Yes. And he went to Calvary. And at the shedding of his blood, our sins are forgiven. And his death and resurrection, we have a new covenant. We are rescued. We have salvation. All of our sins have been paid legally by Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen? From the very beginning of his ministry, in Matthew 4, he had an occasion to fall. To the very end of his ministry, there was an occasion to fall. And throughout his ministry, there was an occasion to fall. But he always talked to the Father. He always heard his father. Amen. That's how we overcome an occasion to fall. Amen. Give God a praise. So let's not put a, a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in our brother's way. Amen. An intentional stumbling block, an occasion to fall. When you call someone to fall, amen, sometimes they'll fall further away than you, we expect. Amen. When we put in a stumbling block, they fall away from the church, away from God. Amen. Church hurt, amen? amen? Wound their conscience. It's hard for some to recover from church hurt, amen? amen. So we don't want to hurt the the weaker saints in Christ. We always want to be like Stephen, an encouragement, amen? We don't want anyone to be offended by the church, by the saints. Some would never return, amen? So we need to guard against our personal opinion. And freedom we have in Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. And our interpretation of scripture. Mm -hmm. And our over zealousness to share our interpretation of scripture. Because it can call, it can create an occasion to fall in some people's life. Amen? And it creates division. Mm -hmm. Separation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a pastor, I try not to speak First, when people having discussions about the Bible, I'll wait, if at all, that I'll speak if they ask. If they don't ask, amen? amen. I, I may not speak, amen? amen? But some come to me because they know I'm pastor and I ask questions, and I feel because they ask, they want to know. And I give them what the Spirit of the Lord has given me, Amen? But we don't, we don't want to hurt our weaker brother or sister over meat, Amen. over our opinions. Amen? Amen? We don't want to harm them by our actions that we're not thinking through. Amen? Amen. Amen? What's our motive? What's our purpose? Is it selfish? Or is it of God? Amen? I pray this of God. Amen. Go back to Romans. Romans chapter 14. The word is speaking to the strong brother. And the weak brother. Because it says in verse 9, For to this end Christ both died, rose, and revived. Amen. Amen. That he might be Lord, both of the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Why do you say that not? Or treat as nothing your brother. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. That's the strong and the weak. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Amen? 
strong, man, weak Christians can cause each other to stumble and to fall, or occasion to fall. Amen? A strong Christian, but one but that's insensitive and one that may flaunt their freedom. They could intentionally or unintentionally offend their weaker brother or sister conscience. Amen? Yeah. Weak brothers or sisters in Christ. What they'll try to do is fence you in, fence others in with petty rules and regulations. The rules and regulations, amen? Yeah. Which also causes division and separation and dissension amongst the family of God, amen? Yeah. So the strong and the weak, we need to be sensitive to one another. The strong and the weak, we need to be sensitive to one another because the weak can cause the strong also to stumble, but with rules and regulations. Yeah. And the strong can cause the weak Amen. To stumble by being insensitive. Yeah. Not walking in love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Only thinking of their freedom they have in Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let us remember Christ died for both. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Destroy not him with your meat for whom Christ died. Yeah. It says in verse 15. It's very important that we understand ultimately that saint, that other brother, that other sister, strong or weak, Christ died for. Yes. And let's not destroy that person with our opinion and with our freedom and liberty and with our rules and regulations. The strong destroying the weak, the weak destroying the strong. Amen. Yes. So let us not therefore judge one another, verse 14, anymore. Can we do that? Amen. Let's not judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Verse 14, I know. See, here we go. The Apostle Paul says, I know. And I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus. There's no greater persuasion than when you're persuaded by the Lord Jesus. He says, I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Amen? I know. See, when you say, I know that, that, is, that intensifies what you're about to say. He says, I know and persuaded by the Lord Jesus. Amen? He understands the teachings of Christ and what the Bible says about, about food. Amen? He says it here right here in verse 14 that there is nothing unclean of itself. He says in verse 20 that all things indeed are pure. But he chose rather to walk charitably or to walk in love. That's how we should walk. How we should walk. Walk in love. Amen? amen. Paul was, amen, persuaded by the Lord Jesus throughout his life. And amen. Once he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, he was fully persuaded in his life, amen, by the Lord Jesus. And that's how we all should walk, be fully persuaded, amen, in our conscience by the Lord Jesus, amen? amen. In Galatians 5 and 10, Paul being persuaded, he said, I have confidence in you through the Lord, see? He's persuaded in the Lord. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubles you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. I'm persuaded in the Lord Jesus. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But listen to this last phrase. 
but he that troubles you shall bear his judgment. When we put an occasion for our brother, when we put an occasion for our sister to fall, whether it's the strong, create an occasion for the weak to fall, or the weak with their petty rules and judgment, create uh, an occasion for our brother and sister to fall. The Bible says, but he that troubles you and creates an occasion for your sister or brother to fall is a troubles people, amen? He that troubles you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Let's be persuaded, amen? Have confidence through the Lord Jesus in how we relate and understand our brother and our sister in Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. In 2 Thessalonians, being persuaded. In chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, In verse 1, finally, brother, pray for us, listen now, that the word of the Lord may have free course. The Apostle Paul is asking the saints to pray for him, that the word of the Lord have free course, that the word of the Lord will spread rapidly and, and be glorified and honored even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, listen now, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from Evil. See, he's, he has confidence. He, he persuaded, amen, that it's the Lord who will keep them from evil, amen? amen? Verse 4. And we have confidence, here we are again, we have confidence in the Lord touching you or concerning you that you both do and will do the thing which we command you. He was what? Had confidence in the Lord. He was persuaded by the Lord. Let's be persuaded in the Lord of our brother and sister. And when we're persuading the Lord in our brother and sister, we won't create an occasion to fall. We won't create an occasion, amen, for them to stumble or be made weak. Amen? Because we have confidence in what the Lord is doing. A lot of times we don't have confidence or we're not reminded that we have confidence that it was the Lord who began that good work in them. And he's going to complete it. And it's not of us to, amen, to rush God and what he's doing with individual saints and churches and amen and and, 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 our, and, our, and our rushing and we thinking they should be further along. We we step in and we're going to give our opinion and our judgment on a food or Saturday or Sunday worship. And what we're doing is creating an occasion for our brother and sister to fall. We're offending them. Understand, God began that good work in them, and therefore, I'm going to walk charitably. Amen. My response is to walk in love. Amen. God will see this through. And let, let, let me pray, amen, that God will, amen, bring light, amen, to my brother and sister, and I won't bring judgment to my brother and sister. Persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Amen. Amen. Uh, How did the Apostle Paul know that? Remember Cornelius? Acts chapter 10. The Lord came to the Apostle Paul during the night in a vision. So, and that, that was Peter, but I'm going to give you the. Um, I want to speak to that in a way. The Lord came and revealed to him that what he called clean, don't you call unclean. Amen? Amen? Amen. But the Lord called clean, we can't call unclean because of our what? Tradition. Because of our tradition and what we were taught early in life and amen and now because we were taught that early in life and it always served me well, and I understand it well. Amen. Now we we won't allow anyone else. We won't even allow God. And we won't even allow the Lord. We won't even allow the Word. Amen. To bring forth new truth. 
because of our church training and church tradition and church bylaws. Amen? Amen. Look at Acts 15. Acts chapter 15. I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus. Act 15. Okay. It's a big preaching meeting. Everyone is there. Very important meeting in the church. Concerning circumcision and Gentiles coming in the church. Verse 2 says, Paul and Barnabas was there. There was no small dissension and disputation with them and certain others of them. They all went to Jerusalem with the apostles and the elders. And it was about the Gentiles in the church. And they come into Christ. Amen? Look at verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. That the Gentiles need to be, in order to be fully accepted into the Christian community, in the Jewish community, they had to be circumcised. Amen. Their children had to be circumcised on the eighth day and they had to keep the law of Moses. Amen. And so they came together, the apostles and the elders, to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing amongst the elders, amongst the apostles, much disputing, along with the Pharisees, this is a church meeting, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. He's speaking of now in chapter 10. Amen. When he went to Cornelius' house. Amen. And Cornelius' house got saved. Yes. He said, you all know that. And God, verse 8, which knows the hearts, bore them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did to us. He gave us, he gave them the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. There's no difference between the saints. Jew or Gentile. There's no difference. Amen. Now therefore, why tempt you God and put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? See, you know, let's not put a yoke upon the strong brother or the weak brother's neck about eating meat offered to idols or esteeming one day above another and, and, and causing one conscious amen to be wounded or to their faith to fail. Amen? Amen? Why tempt you, God, to put a yoke upon their neck? Look at verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. See, it's no difference. It's not about what you eat. It's not about what you don't eat. It's not about what day you assemble yourself together. We're saved because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. That's why you're saved. When we're basing it on having a service on a Saturday, or basing it on having service on on a Sunday, or basing it on not eating meat or eating meat. No, that's what works. We're not saved by work. We're saved by grace. Amen. That no man can boast. Amen. They're saved by Jesus Christ. We're saved by Jesus Christ even as they. Then all the multitude kept silent. See? When you speak the truth with power, all the multitude kept silent. They gave orders to Barnabas and Paul. Amen? Amen. Gave them an opportunity to speak. Yes. Then now verse 13 says, James, the half-brother of Jesus, he stood up. Amen? Amen. He began to share the word of the Lord. 
Everyone had an opportunity to talk at this big preacher meeting. That's how you run a good meeting. A good church meeting. The Spirit of God is in all of us. Let everyone have an opportunity to share. Amen? Amen. Look at verse verse 20. It came to an agreement. Uh, verse 19. Let's start in 19. Wherefore my sin or my judgment is, this is what came out of the meeting, that we trouble not them. Don't trouble the Gentiles. Which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Don't trouble them. Don't create an occasion for them to fall. Implying that they must be circumcised. And they must keep the commandments of Moses. You, you, you're, you're, putting them, you're putting an occasion to fall in front of your brother or sister. Verse 20, but that we write to them that they abstain from pollution of idols, worshiping idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled and from blood. Amen? We will not eat things with blood in it. Amen? Amen. And it says in verse 21, then please did the apostles and the elders with the whole church. See, everybody is in agreement. Because the word of the Lord is what stood above everyone's opinion. The word of the Lord is what made the final decision. It's what mattered. Amen? Amen. They made it clear. Look at verse 21. They wrote a letter. They said, For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, see, creating an occasion to fall, trouble you with words, Subverting or unsettling your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. See? Don't create an occasion to fall. All they wanted was them to abstain from me, from, amen, from the pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from eating things with blood in it. Amen? Look at verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. See, it seemed good to God first. Keep God first. Is this pleasing to God? You want to keep from a, a, a creating an occasion for someone to fall? Will this please my Lord? Amen? It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which you keep yourself, and you shall do well, fare you well. Amen. Amen? They put God first. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost. That's how we will keep ourselves from uh, creating an occasion to fall. Will this please God? Keep God first in our decision. And in the things that we know and things that we do. Amen? We're not going to create an occasion to fall for our brother and for our sister. So Peter, who was, amen, a primary speaker at this big preacher meeting in Acts 15, Later, look at Galatians chapter 2. See, once the meeting is over, and we go about living our lives, living among people. Galatians chapter 2. And verse 1. Come on, get there. 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with, with me also. 14 years later. He said he went up by revelation 
and communicate to them that, that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. Amen? 14 years later. Listen now. What, what happened? Who was there? Peter was there. They saw in verse 7 it says that contrary wise, they saw that the gospel of the circum of the uncircumcision was committed to me as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter. The apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. That was committed to him. Even though he did preach to the circumcision also. Amen? And the gospel of, of the circumcision was to Peter. Listen now. Verse 8. For he that wrought effectually a work effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. He said the same God that worked in Peter toward the Toward the Jews was working in me toward the Gentiles. The same God, same Holy Spirit, same Lord. Amen? Yes. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, listen, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the heathen and they to the circumcision. Okay? They had a plan. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. To remember the poor. Amen? Saints, we all need to remember the poor in our journey. Amen? Yeah. Just like the Good Samaritan. Listen now. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also afford to do. Verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, listen now, I withstood him to the faith because he was to be blamed. What was Peter doing? For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. <laughs> See, now Peter is about to become a what? An occasion for the Gentile to fall. He's going to be a stumbling block. Amen. So you can be saved a long time. You can have walked on water with Jesus. You can have seen Jesus feed the 5,000 or 4,000. 4, 4, you can have seen Jesus do all kinds of miracles and peace be still and the storm was was stopped and raised. Peter raised, I mean, Jesus, he seen Jesus raise the dead. He seen him after his resurrection. But 14 years later, Peter is about to become an occasion for us uh, to fall. Amen? Don't think because we have been saved 15, 20, 30, 35 years, 40 years. Don't think because you have a title or a position or amen in the church, amen, or, or no matter how high it is, that you can't be an occasion to fall, to cause us to fall. And to stumble or to be offended. Amen? Because Peter is about to make a mistake, but Paul is going to correct him. I don't know if you can correct saints today. Listen, but when Peter would come to Antioch, Paul said, I was doing him to the faith. Because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, before James came, Peter was in with the Gentile. He did it with the Gentile. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. Fear them which were of the circumcision. When James and Cephas and John who was the pillars of the church, when James came, Peter, he, he separated himself. Because of fear, because of his Jewish brethren, amen? Verse 13, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. See? An occasion to fall to many people. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with this dissimulation, with this hypocrisy. Even Barnabas, the son of encouragement, even he was carried away. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, not my truth, not the church by law truth, the truth of the gospel. Amen. That's what determines whether we should intervene and correct. Amen. The truth of the gospel. He was not walking in the truth of the gospel. Peter was not walking. It was causing even Barnabas and others that was assembled together with him. I said to Peter, before them all. If you being a Jew, oh, he put a condition on it, you know. You 
call yourself a Jew? If you being a Jew live after the manner of the Gentile and not as do the Jews, why compare you to Gentile to live as do the Jews? And who are the Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. See? We're not justified because we're seen Sunday over another day. We're not justified if we're seen Saturday over another day. We're not justified if we own a vegetable. You're just a vegetarian. You're not justified if you eat meat. You're not justified by that. By the works of the law. But we're justified but by the faith of Jesus Christ. That's why we're justified. Why are you separating yourself, Peter, from the Gentiles who you once sat down and ate meals with daily? Amen. But because of the, your Jewish brethren up here, now you won't eat with us anymore. Amen? Amen? But you're not justified by the works of the law, keeping the law, the commandments of Moses. But we're justified but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ, and you believe and you are sure, you are justified. You are deemed innocent and righteous before God. Amen? Amen. That we might be your daddy, justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Amen. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You're trying to keep the law. You're trying to maintain a, a, a Saturday and all the Old Testament law, you're not justified. You want to have church on Saturday, have church. But you're not justified by it. We're not justified because we have church on Sunday. We're justified because we have faith in Jesus Christ. That will bring justification. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 17. For if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? No, God is not the minister of sin. Amen. But we're justified by Christ. Amen. Even though we, we sin sometimes. Amen. But we're justified by Christ. Amen. So what the, the Apostle Paul goes on to say, I need to get to the end of this. He says in verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Amen. I do not Frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is, is dead in vain. Amen? Amen? Then Christ is dead in vain or needlessly. Let's not create an occasion for our brother and for our sister to fall. Amen? amen. Even Apostle Paul had to, amen, correct Peter before them all. Because of the gospel, because of the word. Amen. He was concerned about Barnabas and all the other saints that were assembled together. Amen. It was creating a, an occasion to fall uh, for them. And these were leaders in the church who were to go out and, and, and evangelize. Amen. And now we have Peter and John and Jane, the inner circle of Christ, separating themselves and Create an occasion to fall. This was a very important time. Get the picture. Peter, James, John, the inner circle of Christ. Still separating themselves from the Gentiles. And Paul corrected Peter and all of them that was there. He directed the, 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 the question to Peter and he corrected Peter. But he was speaking to all. And if, if he would have allowed uh, Peter, James, John, the inner circle of Christ, and, 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 and Barnabas, and, 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 and all the other uh, uh, Jews that were assembled there to walk away from uh, that gathering, believing, uh, such things, it could have hindered the, the furtherance of the gospel. Yeah. He did it for the gospel's sake. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We can't allow others to amen, create an occasion to fall because of the gospel's sake. Not because of our own opinion and beliefs and church bylaws and traditions. It can't be about our tradition. See, that's when it falls apart and create division and skin from the church because we're basing it on tradition, church tradition, church bylaws. No, it's this gospel. Amen. It's this gospel. And because it was gospel, no refute came from Peter, James, or John. They didn't say, who are you? We walk with Jesus. 
You came after them. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't come back at it because they knew the truth came from Paul. And when we share the truth with with saints with one another, Amen. It can settle all arguments. Amen. So, saints, as we close today, let us remember we are not to judge our brother or sister. Amen. Why? Who are you that judges another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. One man esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, whatever day he assembles. Yeah. Whatever day you assemble, you be fully persuaded in your mind. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Saints have some people, some churches have church on Friday. Remember back in the day they had church on Friday night? Mm -hmm. Saturday night? Yeah. Who are we to judge? We need more churches open on Saturday night. Let's not, let's not judge another man's servant because we are all God's servant. The strong and the weak. Amen? Whatever day they regard, whatever day they want to esteem, it's unto the Lord. Whatever day he doesn't esteem, it's unto the Lord. Amen? Whatever one eat, it's to the Lord. If they give thanks, what he doesn't eat and give thanks, it's unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, none of us live to himself. No man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live to the Lord. And whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live, therefore I die, we are the Lord. Whether we esteem Sabbath or Sunday, we are the Lord. Whether we meet a festival, we are the Lord. That's what it's saying. Well, then why you judge the brother? Let's not judge our brother anymore. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everything is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Amen. The strong and the weak. And every one of us shall give an account of, it, of himself to God. Remember, you will give an account of yourself to God. You're not going to give an account of your strong brother or your weak brother. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. So why do you judge your brother? Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Amen. Good God. Praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's not judge one another anymore. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit demonstrated here today for the truth that have come forth, that we have heard your still small voice. We understand and the wicked one cannot come and snatch it away. Father, help us now to be doers of this word and not just hearers only to the glory of your name. We thank you, Father God, for all you have done here this morning, for your power demonstrated, for your grace and mercy shown to us today. We give thanks unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Uh, amen. God is good. At this time, we're going to take this time to um, take our offering and give to God what's God. Amen.